next to the stage, I'd like to welcome Cobus Block from the state of Nebraska and Marion Hacks from Vimaris. Well, thank you uh, for having us today. It's an honor to be here, and um, I'm uh, happy to have the opportunity to tell you why we at the state of Nebraska are really excited about the bioeconomy and why we think our state is really ideally situated to make use of uh, the, the bio revolution in general. So I'm going to just give a real brief background on Nebraska, and then I'm going to turn it over to Marion to give you a little bit more of uh, what's going on in, in their world and how they're using Nebraska to help uh, grow their company. So first of all, Nebraska is a um, real powerhouse in agriculture, obviously. We're uh, a number uh, in the top five in production for uh, things like corn, soybeans, et cetera. Um, and this has helped um, grow the state, um, especially in the past few decades, um, with our connection into the ethanol industry. And what we see is that ethanol is sort of that, that initial step into the bioeconomy, and now what it does is it provides a real um, basis or anchor points uh, for uh, diversification into the bioeconomy. And really what's exciting for companies here is it uh, helps to provide an anchor and a feedstock supplier um, when you're looking to grow your company from initial scale into the industrial scale. So obviously the most uh, interesting for a lot of companies is high quality dextrose that comes out of corn refinement. Um, but there's a whole variety of other products that can be used uh, in your production methods. Those include things like biogenic CO2, proteins, uh, etc. And so what we want to see in the state is all 24 of these plants that include large players like Cargill, ADM, Green Plains, but also smaller locally owned uh, facilities um, have opportunities to partner with your companies and to help grow the bioeconomy. One of the, the resources that we have in the state uh, is a real investment into renewable resources. Omaha Public Power District that supplies the Cargill campus north of Omaha um, has invested heavily into wind production. Um, as a result of that, um, about 35% of their total production is, is, uh, is wind, and they're looking to grow that substantially. Um, but they're able to provide you with cheap, uh, reliable and also renewable power and specifically they can be really flexible working with companies in order to make sure that you're reaching your goals um, and part of that flexibility has allowed them then to provide as an example 100% renewable power to companies like Google or Meta um, so that those companies can reach their goals uh, through their facilities in, in the state. Finally, this ties back into a long-term commitment in the state towards sustainability and sustainable growth. Uh, one of the uh, neat stories about Nebraska, we're blessed to have uh, really um, su uh, sufficient and uh, significant underground water resources, um, but very early on uh, in the state's history, we realized that that would only allow us to grow as long as we um, work to um, maintain those water resources. So over 70 years ago, the state put in place a very unique regulatory system um, that has, in with the addition of technological innovations, allowed us to um, have real growth in agriculture but maintain, keep our water levels uh, within 1% of pre-development uh, levels. So while other places around the globe, both in the United States and elsewhere, are seeing uh, significant depletion in their water resources. Uh, Nebraska has really kept it up to um, a sustainable level to the, to the extent that the U.S. Department of Homeland Security in 2015 did a uh, study looking at our Ogallala Aquifer and found no reason to believe we would face any significant depletion for at least the next 200 years. So those... Uh, resources tied together um, mean that we have been able to, to attract companies into the state to do a lot of the um, bio-innovation um, at industrial scale that you're hearing talked about here at this conference today. Obviously, you'll see some companies up there that are well-known to people in the industry, um, but really, in addition to that, Nebraska prides itself on working with companies to help develop a workforce um, whether that's your higher uh, end, higher skilled folks through the university system, engineers, et cetera, but also technical expertise that can be developed through college um, programs and apprenticeships in order to make sure that we have a workforce for the bioeconomy that can help your company grow. 
And then finally, just on the, on a, on a, the state of Nebraska, um, a couple of years ago, the state implemented the Renewable Tax Credit Program, which is a, f a fully refundable tax credit um, that companies that are producing um, a renewable chemical, which obviously would cover pretty much anybody in this room, um, can, can obtain. So we're excited to see the companies grow in the state. We're really uh, uh, happy to be, have the opportunity to speak about uh, what's happening here. And it, just as an example of how company goes into industrial scale with exciting uh, product, I'm going to let Marion talk about Veramaris. Thank you, Kovus. I take over from here. So these are some of my colleagues you can see on that picture, but I'm going to talk about what we really do in Nebraska, making use of the resources the state provides and also the infrastructure. So that's a picture of what we do. This is a microalgae, as some of you might recognize, but you might not all know what's so special about this algae. You might see those tiny bubbles in the algae, and this is omega-3 rich oil. That's our real product we produce from a natural strain to provide the world with a needed uh, omega-3 supply. In nature, these algae are the first part of a feed chain. So normally, zooplankton would feed on the algae, then fish would eat the zooplankton, fish would be caught, they would be squeezed to produce fish oil, which then ends up as a raw material in aquaculture. Especially for those, those oily fish like, like salmon, they need a lot of omega-3 uh, supply. And what we do actually is we just skip this food chain. We just pr produce the EPA and DHA oil directly as a feedstock uh, material for the salmon uh, industry in, in principle. So it looks very easy, <laughs> but it's definitely not. But as you can already imagine, it has a huge impact on sustainability. Because with one ton of our oil, you can basically replace 66 tons of wild-caught fish, which means it has a tremendous effect on, on marine biodiversity. And there is another thing about it. Our oceans are finite but our human mankind is growing, so we need omega-3 supply, and it cannot come out of the water anymore. It has to be produced elsewhere, and that's what we do. But you need some basic ingredients for it. Of course, you have to have an algae. <laughs> and finding such an algae is not that easy. 6,500 algaes were caught in nature, screened and tested on their potential to produce EPA and DHA. So that's the basis you have to have, but you have to have a carbon source close to you to be able to produce on scale. And that's why we're in Nebraska with our asset. Of course, you also need some supportive ingredients to make the algae grow, and you need the assets for these large-scale fermentations. And we're talking about a couple of hundreds of cubic meters, a hundred, uh, a couple of hundred cubic meters of volume for production fermentation. So this is really large scale. But also you will need the lab fermenters, you will need the seed fermenters, you will need the pilot fermenters. So there is a lot you need to, in the end, come up with an algae producing omega-3 rich oats. And we heard a lot about partnerships already. We have the partnership with the state, but also Veramaris is a partnership. It is a 50-50 joint venture of two large biotech companies. So you see Ivonik here, and you see DSM, or I have to say DSM Firmenich since yesterday, so it's the old logo. I had to hand in the presentation earlier. But that's basically um, what our basis is. So those two companies brought together very different skill sets. Having Ivonik on the one side, expertise in large-scale fermentation, scaling up these fermentations, and also optimizing these large-scale fermenters. And on the other side, we had DSM, who brought in the strain and the know-how how to cultivate these algae and further do R&D on that. So you can see it's a very good fit for, for two companies coming together. But there is a bit more you need, and that's what you can see on the last picture. To invest in such an asset, you need quite a lot of money. So we invested $200 million in this asset in 2019, which was, yeah, and this is a picture of the inauguration with our first truck leaving the plant to produce our algae oil. So 
That was basically my last slide, and I thank you a lot for your att attention. Thank you, everybody.